In this lesson, we'll combine previous two lessons and make LED light turn on when the motion is detected. We will need the following for this lesson. An ESP8266 development board, a PIR motion sensor, an LED module, a 220 ohm resistor, a breadboard, and some jumper wires. This is the schematics for this lesson. There is a PIR motion sensor module, an LED module here, and a 220 ohm resistor. This is just a combination of LED and motion detection program we wrote before. To recap, let's check from the bottom right corner. We connect VIN, which is 5 volts, to the positive column of the breadboard, connect the ground of ESP8266 development board to the negative column of the breadboard. So these two wires provide respective powers to the columns of the breadboard. The ground of PIR motion sensor is connected to the negative of the breadboard. And the VCC of PIR motion sensor is connected to the positive of the breadboard. The center wire of motion sensor is the data wire. It is connected to D1 GPIO pin of ESP8266. In case of the LED module, the positive of LED indicated by its long leg is connected to a 220 ohm resistor. And the resistor is connected to D7 GPIO pin of ESP8266. Negative of the LED module is connected to the negative of the breadboard. That is the schematics for the entire circuit. And in real life, this is what it actually looks like. Now let's go ahead and incorporate codes from the previous lessons to work with both the LED module and the motion sensor. Open the ESplorer and connect ESP8266 development board. Open the last program we used for PIR motion sensor. We're going to make some modifications to this code so whenever the motion is detected, the LED light will turn on. Make some space here so we can define more local variables. Create a local LED pin variable and give it a value of 7 since we are using D7 GPIO pin like we did in the LED program. Then, define local variable LED status and set it to GPIO.low to set the initial status of the LED light. Next, we need to define the mode for the LED pin. So we will write gpio.mode with LED pin and gpio.output. We are reading the values from motion pin with gpio.input and sending an instruction to LED via gpio.output. Next, we need to write the status of the LED pin. Write gpio.write with two parameters, LED pin and LED status. This is there to make sure the LED light is off by default when running the program. Lastly, we will have to modify the if-else statement. Inside the if condition, after the print statement, put LED status equals gpio.low and gpio.write with LED pin and LED status to change the state of the LED light to off. And inside the else condition, after the print statement, we want to turn on the light if the motion is detected. So LED status equals gpio.high and gpio.write with LED pin and LED status. So if motion is not detected, the LED will turn off. And if motion is detected, LED will turn on. Let's click on the Save to ESP button to send the code to ESP8266. As you can see in the yellow box, it starts to run right away. This is what it will look like when running the code in real life. When the hand is waved in front of the motion detector, the console will say motion detected and the LED light will turn on. And when there is no movement, the console will say no motion detection and the LED will stay off. As you can see in the video, there is a delay to go from motion detected to no motion detection. As mentioned in the previous video, you can change the delay rate by controlling the left button of the PIR motion sensor. A light to indicate activity is applied in various places, and yet, we implemented that within 20 lines of code. Programming for IoT may seem daunting, but it is far from being difficult. In the next lesson, we'll learn how to connect ESP8266 to Wi-Fi. If you have any questions, let us know on the IoT4E community board. Thank you.